D, wait for it. Wait for it. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds, and welcome to my Week in Review, where I come to you every Sunday with three entertainment stories that I personally find interesting, and then we discuss them down below. Now, also down below, you can find the articles that I read to bring you this video, and you can read them for yourself, or you can just listen to me where I'm going to break them all down for you. I also like to say that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is always changing up their algorithm, and small channels like mine, we just get shoved to the back of the line. So please ask that you like, share, and subscribe, and I thank you in advance. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, why don't we go ahead and get started with these three stories. Okay, so for my first story this week, you guys, all right, it was revealed this past week there was concept art leaked for a Batman Beyond animated movie. And it was brought to the attention of the interweb because of one of the creators. So we're going to look at this article right here. So... If you don't know Batman Beyond, uh, you're crazy bones and everything, but I'm throwing up some of the, the artwork here now of the movie, and I have to be honest, it's a, it looks pretty good, and it looks very much, and they mention it in here, that it looks a lot like Spider the Spider-Verse movies with Miles Morales, and... I personally like the animation for that, but only for the Spider-Man movies. Those Miles Morales movies, I think something about those movies, it really works well. But I don't like that animation for anything else. I didn't like it with the Ninja Turtles movie. Puss in Boots was okay, but I think they did a, a good job of a mixture of that animation, you know. And, uh, you know, regular animation. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know if that's what it's called, but whatever. So they did leak this, and I think they did it a la Deadpool. You know, they're like, hey... Here's this animation, you know, start tweeting, start, you know, getting on social media and getting these people interested in seeing this movie, and then maybe Warner Brothers will make it. Now, I don't think Warner Brothers is going to make it. I don't think James Gunn is going to make this movie, at least not right now, maybe years down the line. And I think it's just because it's it's just too soon. It's just too soon. And Batman Beyond, I personally feel, is very niche. I don't know too many people that talk about Batman Beyond. Like, uh, Batman Beyond, I thought was a good concept, and I did like it for the most part. But he did also think it was kind of weird. Like, I don't know, man. Uh, but, uh, so, like, I didn't like all the bad guys. Like, I'm like, these are not fun villains for me. There was one woman, she was, I think her name was, like, Plastic or Plastique? No, that's, that's a, that's not, that's a Flash villain or something. I can't remember all the villains' names. Anyways, so, Terry McGinnis is, McGinnis, sorry, is the main character in Batman Beyond. And he is the protege of Batman. So Batman, Bruce Wayne, becomes the Alfred of the group. He trains a Batman, Terry McGinnis, and he shows him how to be the new Batman in this, you know, it's almost like kind of Blade Runner 2049, whatever, kind of, uh, 29, kind of uh, world, you know, this Gotham that's very futuristic, very, sci you know, computer and technology savvy and everything. But let's read a little bit of this article. So it says, ever since the final episodes of Batman Beyond animated series aired, fans have been clamoring for a potential revival of the property through a big screen treatment. Um, there's also some talks about a live action movie. I have to also be honest about that. I don't know if I want to see a live action movie of this. I, I feel, I, I don't know, man. I just don't feel like that's something, I don't feel that that's what people want. I think people want classic Batman, personally. So with how successful Sony Spider-Verse films have been, it's not hard to see the logic that many fans fans have followed. Give Terry McGinnis a shot of at shining on the big screen. Well, now we have an idea of what that might look like as concept art from a canceled Batman Beyond animated series has made its way online. I do want to say, and I'm still throwing up the, the concept art, this concept art does look good, in my opinion. I think it does look good. I think that, and they have this, this tweet right here, but I think that these pictures, they, they do look beautiful, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I personally just don't want to, I, I don't know if I want to see this movie, you know? And I, I know you're probably the ones that really love Batman Beyond or down in the comments section like, like you're, you're wrong, Batman Beyond is so good. And I'm like, listen, I'm not shitting on Batman Beyond. I, I'm, I, like I said, I kind of liked that show for the most part. I just personally like... I, every time I think about that show, I just go, mm, it really wasn't my jam. Like, I love Batman the Animated Series, maybe because I'm old, but 
And, and the thing is, uh, but the thing is, I would watch this movie. I would totally watch this movie in a heartbeat uh, because I love all things DC. I'm a DC girl through and through, always have been. I just love DC characters uh, ever since I was little. I mean, I love Marvel characters, but come on. If, if, if Marvel, if it's not Silver Surfer or the X-Men, I'm all like... I'm like, eh. I'm like, it's okay. I like it, but it's okay. But uh, but DC is where it's at for me personally. Okay, so back to what I was saying about this. So, okay, so it says, the artwork has shared online by production designer Yuki uh, Yuki Demers and filmmaker Patrick Harpin. Now, I did see a lot of people saying like these guys are never gonna work again because they shared this this concept art, and I go. Mm, I don't think that that's the case. I mean, like, first off, have you ever heard of Yuki Demers or Patrick Harpin? No. So this was probably them blowing their load because they're probably all like, listen, we we said we, we wanted to make this movie. It didn't get, you know, they they said no, but maybe we can get, you know, buzz about it and then they'll make it. And this is their, this is their shot, you know, and I, and I, for that, I say, take your shot. If you, you know, if you're not going to get this, right off the bat, then maybe you can get it like now, but, uh, you know, I, and maybe it was a mistake. Maybe they're all going to be pissed off about it, but I don't know, but let's, uh, let's see how this works out. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but again, you never know. So as the duo revealed that they pitched an animated film featuring the futuristic Cape Crusader to Warner Brothers last year. And it says five months ago, Patrick Carpin walked into D uh, Warner Brothers Pictures DC office and pitched a Batman Beyond animated feature. Before we pitched, the, they warned us there is absolutely no way we can do a Batman Beyond movie. But they loved our enthusiasm. Pitched online for okay. So, so first off, good that they told them right off the bat that they were never going to. They're not going to make a Batman Beyond movie because I personally I don't know about you, but I love it when people shoot me straight in the face and they just say, "Hey, you know, no, you know, I I hate when people drag stuff out or they make excuses like." No, not at this time, but, you know, come back. And it's like, just say no and just get over it, okay? Because I don't, I don't need your nonsense wrapped up in here. So it says, uh, we pitched an online entire film, and what we sh uh, share has a never turned into a maybe, said Dammers Patrick. In a post on social media, the artist revealed that they've been working their way up the company in hopes of reaching James Gunn. Which I, I think that good for them. I, and, and hopefully they keep trying because I'm like, you know, hey, if this is your dream to make this, here's the concept art again. But if this is your dream to make this movie, then I say keep going, you know. I'm just like, uh, you know, I, I don't want you to stop your dream. But at the same time, it's like that guy that's playing, you know, rock band in his garage and he's like 52 and it's like. You know, are you guys just jamming out on a Saturday night or do you honestly think you're going to be the next, you know, rock star? Because if you think you're going to be the next rock star, honey, I got news. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> okay. So uh, overall, I think that this, I think that good for them that they 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 went out there and like uh, did their thing, but I don't know. So I'm going to read this last paragraph and then we'll get the moving along. So as earlier last year, there were reports of Warner Brothers working on a live action Batman Beyond adaptation with Michael Keaton reprising his role Bruce Wayne slash Batman in the project after his debut in The Flash. While that never came to fruition thanks to many uh, managerial changes at Warner Brothers, an animated feature would probably prove less of a hassle. That is true. I do agree with that. I did. There was news that that Batgirl, before it got canceled, she was going to be the Batman Beyond and everything. And that she was going to be take over the mantle and Bruce Wayne was going to, to teach her. But... Again, I don't know if, if again, I don't know if this is something people really want, you know? I mean, some people might, but I think it's so far and few between. Like I said, I have nothing against Batman Beyond, but I'm not, I'm not clamoring for this. Like this article said, I'm, I'm like, listen, I, that's fine if you want to believe that, but I'm, I personally am not, uh, I'm not all like, oh my God, I need a Batman Beyond movie and everything. So, yeah, but we'll see how this turns out. Uh, again, I just don't think it's going to go anywhere, but you never know. You never know, and if it does, good for these two. All right, you guys, so that was my first story of the week. So for my second story of the week. All right, you guys, I'm super excited about this, you guys. You have no idea. So who are these four gentlemen on my my left, right? I don't know. I'm looking at the screen. They're on my right on my screen. Anyways, these are the Beatles. I just want to say right now, 
The Beatles are my favorite band of all time. I love the Beatles. Like, I love the Beatles. So You hate the Beatles compared to how much I love the Beatles. Like, they are just so good. I love all their music. I could listen to it all day, every day. It's so good. I just love it. They're, uh, I, I cannot tell you. The Beatles were there for me in a time of my life when I was just not having a good time. And I love them. Okay, so what's happening? The Beatles are getting a cinematic universe. I don't know how great this idea is, but I'm loving it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I mean, I'm all here for it. So they're getting their own cinematic universe, which I and uh, so how they how they presented this is there is four movies coming along the pipe and the filmmaker Sam Mendes, he wants to make four movies, one each starring each beetle and each movie is from the perspective of a different beetle. So you get one from George, one from Paul, one from Ringo, one from John. So four movies and it's all from their different perspective. Now, I did see online that people are like, yeah, but nobody cares about George and Ringo. I just want to say right now, George, my favorite, and when they when they broke up and they went their own ways, George, my favorite music of all of them. Like, I love his music the most out of all of them. And I know everybody's all like, what? John had such good music. He did. I'm not saying, I'm not dissing on John's solo music um, or, or, or Paul. I just love George's stuff the most. Like, I just love it. Uh, he, he's, he's just great. So, in saying that, I just want to say, and don't, don't, don't sleep on Ringo. Ringo is a great drum player. A lot of people want to talk about, you know, uh, uh, peace and love and everything, and uh, just talk about uh, George uh, Ringo being like the the crappy one. But no, he's 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 so talented, and and people don't give him enough uh, credit and everything. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit of this, not too much. Okay, so it says, Sony Pictures and Apple will be teaming up with filmmaker Sam Mendes on the production of four movies, each about the life of each of the Beatles. So yeah, so then here is, so the Beatles, they're going to do, so like I said before, they're going to do four movies, right? And each one, like this article said, will be each Beatle. And I'm quite excited about it. The thing is, though, are people going to want to watch Four separate movies about the Beatles. And for me personally, now I understand that the Beatles might not have the hugest following in terms of like a lot of older people like them. A lot of young people don't really know the Beatles and that's uh, that's a shame and you know, they're, you know, worse or off for it. But I just want to say like, the, the, again, the Beatles, I love the Beatles. Okay. So let's read this article just a little bit. This one. Not the last one. That last one. I should have pulled up this one. Okay, it says, In a move that ought to make fans of the Beatles twist and shout, Sony Pictures Entertainment and Oscar-winning filmmaker Sam Mendes and his Neil, okay, whatever, magical film, won each of the members for music most famous and enduring band. Mendes will direct all four of the films, and this marks the first time Apple Corp, I just wish they would say Apple, and the Beatles, Paul, uh, McCartney, Ringo Starr, and families of John Lennon and George Harris have granted full life story and music rights for a scripted film. Um, that's going to be fantastic. It'll be interesting to see because George and John are both dead. It'll be interesting to see how they handle that. Again, I just don't know, but I wonder, and I wonder how, you know, influential the, the and how how the other two that are alive what they'll play a part in these movies like will sam mendes be you know will they play an integral part or will they just be like no we have enough you guys we don't need you guys to come in and tell us your life story they're looking for writers and says uh this is perhaps the most ambitious project deadline has revealed exclusively since our break with tom cruise okay uh thank you deadline that complicated project is still okay all of this came about when American Beauty Oscar winner Mendes pitched the project in Hollywood and just about everyone flipped their mop tops for it. Uh, good. We went out into L.A. just before Christmas to pitch the project, and it's fair to say we were met with a universal enthusiasm, Mendes told Deadline. The reason Sony stood out from competing offers was down to Tom and Elizabeth's passion for the idea and commitment to propelling these films theatrically in an innovative and exciting way. Star weighed in about the projects on X, and there's, there's Ringo Star. I love Ringo. I know people always sleep on Ringo too, and it's like, you guys, John and Paul are great, but they're they're not the only two fucking Beatles. You know, as they said, 
Have you heard the news? Oh boy, we all support the Sam Mendes movie project. Yes, indeed, peace and love. Yeah, that's Ringo's thing, peace and love. Peace and love, peace and love. So I know some people might say nobody wants to see four movies based off the Beatles, and I disagree, Hooker. I would, I want to, I love to see this crap. I want to see this crap so bad. And I'm quite excited about it. I'm not going to lie, you guys. Uh, this sounds great to me. The only thing is, is what if they do the first movie and it bombs? And people were taught, and, and you know, I saw some people like, well, when what movie do you put out first? And I think you put out one of the two fam- more famous Beatles, Paul or John. Because a lot of people shit on Ringo and a lot of people really don't know George. So I would personally put John first because I think that he's probably the most famous because of Yoko Ono and everything. And I think that that would you know, maybe shine a light on some things through his perspective. Well, it obviously would. But I would do John first. Or Paul, but I would probably do John first. And then I would do Paul last. Just because it'd be like, it, it would round it out and everything. But I would do George right after John. I think that George has a compelling story. I mean, he did so much humanitarian work that people just really don't know about. And I think that he's just great. Um, and then I would do, again, I would do Ringo. And then I would, I would round it out with Paul. So I think that, I think that this, uh, this, I, this sounds such a good idea. This is such a good idea, you guys. I love it so much. And we'll see how all this turns out. I hope it really works out, you guys, because I, I'm excited for it. I think that I, again, I just love the Beatles so much that I think that, uh, for me personally, this will be, uh, fantastic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Maybe not for you, but if you're not a Beatles fan, I get it. It's fine. It's totally fine. You know, whatever. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? All right, you guys. So that was my second story of the week. So for my third and final story of the week. Okay, you guys. So it looks like Jurassic World 4, but like the eight, the seventh movie in the series, is get, it got a director now, okay? And it's Gareth Edwards. Let's hop over to this Deadline article. So Gareth Edwards, he he pitched uh, his he his his uh, his thought process around Jurassic World, the next Jurassic World movie. And you remember they had David Leach, he was going to do it, and then they had creative differences. And I'm all like, how do you have creative differences, David Leach? It's not like you're like such such a great artur that you're all just like I have these kinds of thoughts about Jurassic World of all things, about dinosaurs. I'm like, whatever, get out of here. But Gareth Edwards, he, you know, he got the gig. And it looks like he's going to be doing the next Jurassic World movie. And they're still keeping with that date, yo. 2025, I'm like, I don't know if you're going to be able to do it. I mean, like, that's a whole year. And you got to film it still and then do the CGI. So I'm like, if you think you could do it, good for you. But maybe he might do it like the first one, uh, the first Jurassic Park movie. Because the CGI in that one, they did a lot of practical effects with the dinosaurs, and then the CGI was not as as much as people think it is. I want us. I think it was only CGI wise. I think it was like fifteen minutes. Do not quote me on that. But it wasn't very much in terms of that movie because they did use a lot of practical effects. Like they built a giant T Rex. And that was in a lot of the shots. So then they also built some of the other dinosaurs. So I'm all like, if you can, if you can replicate that, and then I say go for it. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know about you, but I love practical effects. I think they're really good. All right, so let's read this real quick. It says, after a deal couldn't be made with David Leach to direct Universal Pictures and Amberlin Entertainment have moved fast as the studio is in final negotiations for Row One director Gareth Edwards to helm the new Jurassic World movies. And I know a lot of people want to be like, well, he didn't really direct Rogue One because he got kicked off and then What's-His-Face came in and rewrote the whole thing. But I'm all like, no, you got to give him credit. I mean, like, what what if his movie was better? We just don't know. So I I don't know. Although I do like Rogue One. Rogue One was very good. What's-His-Face did a good job. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. The studio recently dated the pick for to bow on July second, two thousand twenty-five. Again, so, coming up so fast. I know it's like a, over a year away, but in terms of movie making, that's pretty fast. Uh, the it moved fast to find a new director. With Edwards spending all of last week meeting with executives after impressing producer Steven Spielberg and Frank Marshall, which is a good, which is a good, good sign. Who helped launch the franchise in the '90s after the soon followed pre-production of the uh, expected to ramp up once a deal is sealed. Um, he is not writing on it. That's the David Cope, Coop, Cope. Uh, he's writing the movie. 
It says the new movie will be completely fresh take on Jurassic era with Jurassic World cast members Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard not expected to return, nor the original trilogies, uh, Thespians, Jeff Goldblum, Laura Dern, and Neil Simon. David, oh here, yeah, David Coop penned to script. The film will be, uh, will be, will be, oh, that's a typo, guys, right there. Look at that. It says the film will be, will be. <laughs> Deadline. What's going on, guys? Come on. Executive produced by Steven Spielberg through Amberlynn and Franklin Marshall, yada, yada, yada. And we don't know what the story is about. I have to say, I, I honestly love the original trilogy even even the the lost world one where they take it to san francisco the t-rex and everything it's ridiculous but i do like i like jurassic world the first one but the other two i'm just like mm, i mean like the, the last one dominion was just ridiculous and then the one i don't like the the clone girl that one was just weird i don't know man whatever uh, I don't know. I don't, plus, I don't like the dinosaurs in the real world. Like, I don't like this Dinotopia situation going on, but whatever. So, what do I think of this? I think that this is fine. I mean, Gareth Edwards, I mean, I don't know if he's commercial enough to really do this just because the creator did not do well. And I personally didn't think it was that great of a movie. Like, after watching it, I was just like, eh. I was like, I mean, I liked some stuff in there. But overall, I was just like, that movie wasn't that great. But he did shoot that movie and had all those visual effects on the cheap. Like, he did it on the cheap. So if they're looking at what he did with the creator and they're like, hey, uh, you know, and, and he's not writing. So the he could, direct, like, it was directed fine. So he could do all of it. Maybe now that he could do this because the, the CGI in that was pretty decent. So, and he did, and it was low budget. So we'll see how this turns out. I, I'm... I don't, I'm not going to say I have faith in Gareth Edwards, but I do think that he should be given a shot. And this could turn out really, really good. You never know. And let's, let's, let's wait and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? All right, you guys. Well, that was my last story of the week. Tell me, what do you guys think about all of this? How do you feel about these concept arts for this Batman Beyond movie? And do you want to see Terry McGinnis on the sta uh, silver screen, uh, whether it's through this animated movie or through a live action adaptation? But do you want to see this Spider-Verse animation style uh, animated movie of Batman Beyond? Or are you like me and you're just like, I mean, if they make it great, but if they don't, I'll be fine. It's not that big a deal. This is not one of those things that I absolutely need. But uh, yeah, and how do you feel about this animation style and, and it being used more and more? I personally, I just wish they would stop. After the Spider-Verse movies, I personally don't want to see this animation anymore. I don't like it. It's not my favorite. I, I it just, I don't like it. it. Like sometimes it just like, like stuff just pops out of me, like 3D style. And I'm all like, I don't want this. This is a lot. It's a lot to take in. Also, Tell me, how do you guys feel about this Beatles cinematic universe? Are you like me and you're just like, yes, please, I want more? Or are you just like, no, thank you? Uh, because, you know, I get it. Some people just don't really like the Beatles. I mean, I don't get it in terms of like, how can you not like the Beatles? But I do think that people that don't like the Beatles can still respect the Beatles be just because of what they've done music-wise, you know, what they've done in the industry, and just their lasting effects on the music industry and on art in general. You know, I think that, uh, you know, and their humanitarian work, uh, especially George. Again, don't sleep on George or Ringo. Don't sleep on those two. I know they're not as famous as the other two, but they're really great. And, you know, and just how do you guys feel about this? Will you see any of these movies? Like, the you, will you see at least John's movie or Paul's movie? Or are you just not interested? And which Beatle is your favorite? And which Beatle song is your favorite? You know, I have too many to pick. I can't pick one. I probably could if you made me. Also, tell me, how do you guys feel about Gareth Edwards getting the gig as director for the next Jurassic World movie? Are you tired of these Jurassic World movies or do you want to see more? Are you just like loving them like left and right? Or are you just like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to see any more of these movies. All right, you guys. Well, tell me what you guys think. Go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind if you're my channel. Please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on my next uh, Week in Review. You guys have a good week. Bye. Hey nerds, if you like this video, go ahead and click that Geek What icon and subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and join me every Sunday with my Week in Review.